Okay, well, I'm here with Toby Walker, who uh, has become one of Homespun's most popular mm. instructors. Um, Toby's a great finger picker, blues player, and kind of an expert at this point on, on blues and on teaching. So welcome. Thanks. This is a real, <laughs> always a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you get started playing this style? It's all your fault. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, um, you know, I was basically coming at the very first from the electric end. So I was listening to the Rolling Stones. And, of course, I saw where Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf, and I started getting into the electric side of the um, blues. And then I started diving into the acoustic side. Uh, and somewhere around that time, I just couldn't figure out how they were getting, one guy was getting all those sounds out of a guitar. Yeah. And I remember going into a music store out on Long Island where I lived, and there was a book. It was used. Uh, copyright, I think it was 1964, called Finger Picking Styles for Guitar. Yeah. That was the book that you produced. Right. And um, I remember there was songs in there, and one of the first songs I learned was Freight Train. Uh -huh. And that taught me how to finger pick and get that alternating bass and the melody in there. And yeah. once I had that down, um, I was on my way. It really yeah. was on uh -huh. my way, yeah. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. But then you got more into Mississippi blues mm -hmm. and... Delta stuff. And yeah. How did that happen? Well, uh, again, I was listening to these records, you know, Sunhouse, uh, Charlie Patton, yeah. uh, Robert Johnson was another mm -hmm. one. And it seemed Robert Johnson was a little bit more accessible um, to my ears because the, the recordings weren't as scratchy as, say, the Blind Lemon Jefferson ones. But still, all of it was mm. captivating. So I just started uh, playing by ear, trying to figure all the stuff out. And then yeah. eventually through uh, other manuscripts that were out there, um, I was just putting it together. And really back then there wasn't too much out there at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. So can you remember one of the first blues licks you learned? Oh, the first blues <laughs> lick. Well, okay, this would, it would be this one. This is my, the very first blues lick. I had no idea what I was doing. And I had no idea what that was. Um, and I just would play that. I heard it on a B.B. King record. And, and I would just practice it and practice it. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine came over and he played a couple of chords. And when he hit the A chord, I went, whoa, that must make sense. And then I figured out uh -huh. that was an A note. And then I said, well, you know, play a G chord for a second. And then I... Then yeah. I was getting an idea of how the how the fingerboard worked, so that was one of the very first little blues licks I learned. Yeah. Um, there was another guy named uh, 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 Zucklich was his last name, and he uh, he he taught me this, uh -huh. and I went, "What's that?" And he showed me, and I've been doing it. I still remember those licks because yeah. they, you know, when you, it's like that first time you just always will remember what was going mm -hmm. on, and that really stuck with me. Yeah, that first lick you played, it only had three notes. Yep. But and it has to do also with the way you hit the notes. Yeah. Uh, you get that vibrato in there, mm -hmm. and that really means a lot when you hear that note. Uh, play that again and do that vibrato. <laughs> That, yeah. Yeah, that. Um, right. I think there was a there was a, a video I remember of BB King showing how he yeah. did that with the fanned his finger, right. and and the, just that that little bend before it, and yeah. that to me was that was one of the first blues licks I ever learned. Yeah, nobody did that better than BB. No. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then so, and you actually went down to Mississippi, right? Away yeah, uh, many years later, uh, when I had a good, uh, car license and everything, um, I was able to drive down. And uh, the first place I went was um, uh, Clarksdale, Mississippi. Uh -huh. And there was a guy there, uh, Wade Walton was his name. Hmm. And Wade was a harmonica player, but he also played guitar. And he would get the most out of just one chord. So mm -hmm. if he's going. <laughs> I 
was just watching him do that, and he, he runs a barber shop. Uh -huh. So he used to take a harmonica, and he used to put it in his harmonica stand, and then he'd take his razor, and he'd take out the barber strop, and he would play like a little rhythmic thing and play harmonica like wow. that. Yeah, so uh -huh. he, was, he was a very, very cool guy. Uh -huh. um, south of that was Leland, Mississippi, uh, where I met uh, James' son, Thomas. Uh -huh. And I got to study some of his, uh, some of his licks, you know. Uh... So he was, yeah. a, he was another guy. He played a very deep. Delta style, mm -hmm. and on the other side of the, uh, the Delta there, there was um, Eugene Powell, and he played a more sophisticated style. Uh, he taught me a tune called Hacksaw Rag, which was just... <laughs> had this one which was interesting to see him because I had a record of his he he recorded under the name Sonny Boy Nelson yeah, yeah. and um, a writer I think it was um, I forget who the who was writing the liner notes but he he had it wrong he said that Eugene Powell was playing in the key of E and it was very strange sounding and when I was playing along with the record I couldn't figure out because he was getting notes in there it was it was in the key of E but something else was going on and it wasn't until I saw Eugene, and I realized he tuned his guitar two and a half steps below pitch. Uh, so when he played mm -hmm. an A chord, it was the key of E. Uh, yeah, so yeah. That, that threw me, and I had to tune mm -hmm. my guitar way down to play along with him. Uh -huh. wow. Yeah, and all of these people, uh, there was Etta Baker, there was sure. Jack Owens, uh, R.L. Burnside, um, there was a guy, uh, Turner Fodrell from Virginia, that played very much in a Piedmont style. So mm -hmm. I would go out and seek these people out and learn what I could and then keep going back, you know, uh -huh. uh, two, three times a year and visit oh, them. Great. Yeah. So and you're carrying this on with your teaching. Mm -hmm. you, you have a great website with a lot of lessons. And, of course, you're doing all this stuff for Homespun. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really great. And when you get out there and play, I've seen your shows. It's pretty spectacular. I feel very blessed very, very blessed. I mean, for one thing, it was your book that I learned from, the very first thing. And here I am now teaching for mm -hmm. Homespun. Yeah. It's a, it's just a wonderful way. And it's always nice, and you know this too, that when we teach something to students and then we get that feedback from them, or sometimes right. they'll write us a letter or we'll see them at a show somewhere and they'll come up and thank us. And it's it's the best feeling in the world. It really is. It, yeah. it really well, is. Great. Yeah. That's a great note to leave you on. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Toby. <laughs> Good note to steal. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Happy. Yeah, it was great. Thanks, everybody.